Good morning and welcome to St. Ignatius Parish. As we begin our celebration on this fourth Sunday of Advent, I invite you to stand and face the center of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From Christ who was, who is, and who is to come, peace be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. We hear today of Joseph, who responded to the mystery of God with patience and listening. May we respond to God's working with similarly courageous and open hearts. On this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, we bridge the darkest days of our year and we'll light the final candle in our wreath. May this light kindle in our hearts peace, courage, and faith in the love God has for us. O King of all nations, the joy of every human heart, O keystone O the mighty arch of humanity, whose justice shall reach to the ends of the earth. Come and save the creatures you have fashioned. In the light of these four candles, we pilgrim forward to the dawning of our salvation. And now I invite you to sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, beginning with verse 4, which can be found on page 2 of your order of worship. Verse 4. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz saying, ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the mother nether world or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the letter of the beginning of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. 
the gospel about his son, descended from David according to the flesh, but established as son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness, through resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among whom are you also, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be holy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, Since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, He did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. My sisters, my brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. So once again, welcome to our community. It's so good to be with you and to celebrate with you. And as I say, you know, more and more we're getting more people, and that's wonderful for all of us. You know, as we hear these readings, as we get closer to Christmas, what people have to realize, it's only in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke that you have infancy narratives. You're not going to find anything in Mark or John. It's only in Matthew and Luke. And each is quite different. 
because basically they are writing for different communities. And as they pick and choose from the oral tradition, they want things will fit in what they're trying to say. Luke is writing for a Gentile community. And so he's going to pick and choose things that talk about the universality of Jesus' message. Matthew is writing for communities that are basically Jewish in origin. People that would know the Old Testament very well. It would be part of their daily prayer. And so he uses a great deal from the Old Testament. And to understand the reading of today, we have to understand a little bit of this background of what Matthew is doing. If you ever read his genealogy and Luke's genealogy, once again, they're very different, mainly because they're not intended to be historical items, they're theological. The idea in Matthew, Luke, I mean in Matthew, Jesus comes as a fulfillment of the Old Testament. In Luke, Jesus comes to bring all people into his community. And so as we read this gospel today, if you were a Jewish person reading it, immediately they would think back to a very important story in Genesis. The story about Joseph. If anybody has ever seen the movie done by Weber, or the play, the musical, you know, Joseph and his magic technicolor dream coat. This was about Joseph. Joseph was the 11th son of 12, born to Jacob. Loved by Jacob, spoiled by Jacob. So Joseph, in many ways, ends up a spoiled brat. His brothers, the older brothers, hate him. And I mean, they hate him. At times, they even talk about killing him. So one day, Joseph is sent by Jacob to go visit his brothers. As he approaches, the brothers start dreaming of what they can do with him. What it ends up is, Joseph is sold into slavery into Egypt. These are brothers. And they sell Joseph off into slavery. After that, for all practical purposes, Joseph is dead. They're not going to see him again. They're not going to go to Egypt. Joseph is gone. He is dead. So Joseph is taken off to Egypt. Where? Because God is with him, and because of his ability to work with dreams, he rises up in power to eventually become the prime minister to the Pharaoh, a very significant person in Egypt. One of the great things is, Joseph is aware that there's going to be a huge famine coming. So during the prosperous years, he builds storage bins to prepare for this great famine. When the famine hurts, it begins to hurt the family of Jacob. They're in Palestine, but they're running out of food. So Jacob has heard of the fact Egypt has plenty. So he sends his sons to Egypt to beg for grain. And guess who they come across? Their brother that they thought was dead. Joseph recognizes them. They don't recognize him. And Joseph shows up as a man of tremendous love and forgiveness. He provides them with food. But then he asks is about his family. So he said, I want your younger brother to be brought with you if you come again. They're afraid, and they tell their father that they have to bring their brother Benjamin. And the father said, I lost one of my sons by my wife, Rachel. I can't lose a second son. But they said, 
We've got to bring him if we're going to get food. So they bring the younger brother. And it's there that Joseph breaks down in tears and reveals who he is. But what is very important is his forgiveness, his love. Any young Jewish youngster is brought up to know this story because Joseph is considered to be the epitome of what it is to be a good Hebrew. Fine, he may have been a spoiled brat at one time, but he's grown. He's really grown in his love of God and one another. And even two brothers that had once sold him in slavery. So Joseph is seen as the one who saves the Hebrew people. He invites his father and his whole family to come down to Egypt. And so there's a real salvation of his family. And one of the things I put as a note is Christian. As we look at this story, there is a real resurrection motif. Joseph is sold off to slavery. As far as they are concerned, he's dead. But he goes through this pain and suffering. He emerges as a powerful man in Egypt, and he saves his family. He lives, and really is the one that saves the Jewish people. So when Matthew introduces Joseph, the father of Jesus, Immediately, every Jew is going to think back and realize who the original Joseph was. And from Matthew, Joseph, the husband of Mary, comes in this new sense as the new Joseph. A man who's very kind, a man that really reaches out, a man that is very forgiving. Stop and think what any man here would feel if this woman that he's betrothed to is suddenly pregnant. What must have been the feelings, the fears, the anger of Joseph? What might he have shared with some of his friends? But in spite of that, he still loves Mary. You know, if he made it public, the death penalty is called for for adultery. If he had made it public, Mary could have been stoned to death. But first of all, he doesn't want to hurt Mary. He still cares for her. He still, in a certain sense, loves her. And then in a dream, and this is key, Joseph trusts the dream. He probably doesn't understand what this is, that this baby is the son of the Spirit. But he trusts, and he goes forth, and he listens to the angel, and he takes Mary into his home. Joseph is a wonderful character, very open to the Spirit, very loving, living out that command that God had given. Love God, and love your neighbor. And what is very key is he's open to the surprises of God. And so as we go forward, as we celebrate Christmas, we have a God that many times enters into our life and can really surprise us by his call. You know, I was just sharing with a young couple that are getting married. And they described how they met and the way that God led them together. Both were very much of a surprise. You know, when I look back, for instance, I might have shared the story with you, how my parents met. My father was a student at Tufts University and his roommate. And one day they got a call from two other people in the engineering school. And they said, my father was called Frenchie. Frenchie, we need help. We have a blind date with these two women, but we have come down with chicken pox. So can you go on this blind date? So they agreed. So they picked up two women. 
Margaret McCarthy and Esther Churstead. My father escorted Esther Churstead. This, this, this Archie Smith escorted Margaret McCarthy. During the evening, they switched partners. <laughs> and both got married. Both were married for 45 years to both Esther and my mother died of cancer. But this is the call of God. This is where God enters into our lives, offers little moments where we can say yes or no. But that's the surprise that we live as Christians, is being open and listening and being ready to be surprised by God. So please stand. And using the Apostles' Creed, let us make a profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. Our sacristan could still use a few extra hands with the collection. If a few more willing hands could meet him near the angel at the back of the church. So in this fourth week of Advent, we place our trust in Emmanuel, God with us, and so offer these needs to a God of care. For the church that we dream beyond the horizon of our own narrow experience, weaving a pathway toward a move to a more just and peaceful wor world, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For protesters in Iran and those suffering due to war and cold in Ukraine, that the prayers of the human family focus on mercy and protection for those in danger, and that leaders for human and that lead leaders for human flourishing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this season of gathering, we pray for families especially those in anguish caused by division, and that the Holy Spirit inspire tender hearts and vision to see opportunities for healing and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For all of the intentions written in the book at the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, that her mantle of care melt away feelings of despair and fear. We pray to the Lord. Uh, Lord. For our beloved faithfully departed, especially Sylvia Walker, Rod Cortez, and Mary M Marie Birney, that they be found rejoicing in the fullness of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For St. Ignatius Parish, that the Spirit quiet our frantic doing during the season act of activity and help us gaze in awe at God's goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord. God of mystery. You sent your only Son to live among us and to save us. As we draw closer to the birth of Christ, may the mystery of the Incarnation fill us with trust and wonder at your great love. And we ask it through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. As you know, this is the point in our liturgy when we pass the basket. These financial gifts are the lifeblood of this community. We are so grateful to everyone who can make financial contributions. Know that every dollar supports the praying and outreach of this community. 
Those of us joining online will find a link in the chat to the Sunday collection at this time. Thank you very much. The angel Gabriel can be found on page five of your order of worship. Please stand <clears throat> and to pray, my sisters and my brothers, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all the Holy Church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar just as you filled with the, this power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just 
our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came among us. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so they may find us watchful in prayer and exalted in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, we sing the hymn of your glory, which without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, it entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving you thanks, broke the bread gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave a chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. So now let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. Humbly we pray the cheering in the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Salvatore our Bishop, all the clergy, and Lord, all the holy people we've called together to be your church. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So now, in song, let us pray to God in the beautiful words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles and friends, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And so may the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. And with your spirit. So now let us share that wonderful peace of the Lord. For those that are sharing at home, let us say our prayer for spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, we believe you are fully present in the bread that is blessed and broken, and the wine that is blessed and poured out in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Thank you for making this a part of you, the mystical body of Christ the Church. Renew in us your sacrificial presence, and let us be united with you at this moment in all of our thoughts, words, and actions, we may represent you and love others as you love us. 
my sister is my brother. This is truly Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who's taken away the sin of the world. How happy are we we're called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, worthy. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus keep us in God's love now and forever. Amen. As we are united through the body and blood of the Lord, join together in singing Come Lord Maranatha, which is number 66 in your Breaking Bread hymnals, 66, and we will sing the verses for Advent. What? We don't have enough?
Please remain seated for the closing prayer and the announcements. Thank you. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. This coming weekend, we celebrate Christmas. We hope you and your family and friends will join us for Masses. On Christmas Eve, there will be a 4 p.m. children's Mass, 6 p.m. and midnight. Then on Christmas Day, there'll be an 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 11.30. If I can give you notice, 4 p.m., come early. It fills. We are excited to celebrate Christmas with lots of friends and family from near and far. Due to an uptick in COVID infection, we strongly recommend that you wear a mask for our Christmas Eve, Christmas Day liturgies. Please bundle up. The heat is still not working. I don't think I have to tell you that. So we encourage you to wear coats, hats, and whatever layers you might need to be comfortable. As your Christmas winds down, consider bringing a gift to support Epiphany Center. Bring your wrapped gift to the 4 p.m. Family Mass on Christmas Eve. Suggested items or educational toys, classic board books, sleep sacks for newborns, and gender-neutral jackets for 12 months till 4, or Target gift cards. We're still very much in need of liturgical ministers for Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. and Christmas Day, especially greeters. No experience needed. Contact Mary Warner if your family is able to help. So again, my thank you for celebrating with you. It's good to be with you. Music ministry, servers, ushers, readers, thank you all very much. We couldn't do it here. And so I probably will see you this week, but in case, a glorious and blessed Christmas to all of you. Please enjoy it. And I always say a prayer that on Christmas Day, all the calories and cholesterol disappear. So I give you permission to eat to your heart's content. So enjoy the day with family and friends. And again, thank you very much. Please stand. So may the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let's go forth now to love God and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As we go forth, join together in singing Creator of the Stars of Night, which can be found on page 10 of your Order of Worship. Please return your orders of worship to the cubbies as you depart from the church.